Hi everyone. So I've just taken the rank 1 and GR140 clear with my Demon Hunter, with my Shadow DH. And this was earlier, just in like a little one key push actually, that uh, I decided to do in the break that we had from our group. And I just wanted to like show the run. It's nothing really special, but I wanted to talk through it a little bit and also like some things that I've discovered. And also a lot of questions that I get from especially Shadow Impale players. So this is the rift here. It was actually a one floor plague tunnels with ice clan ice clan is actually pretty good so i literally just opened one key and i was like okay let's let's just try if you can one shot it and i did and uh yeah it was it was kind of like expectedly easy i guess because i'm already at over 2k paragon and i have pretty solid gear and i've tried this like two or three days ago already actually when it was way lower and i almost did it in like half an hour of like just trying out some things so this is here with the fire rune. So fire is what most people are playing. And I believe it's mostly also like the easier version to play, I guess, because you kind of just go for small pulls like this. You don't really try to fish or kite many enemies together and you just you kill stuff as you go. So something like this is actually ideal. You have ice clan, kind of juicy monster type and they are kind of safe as well. You can keep your squirrels necklace most of the time when you're not just fighting these elites here. And uh, you you have a lot of damage. The cold rune is something that I've tried as well. And this is mostly going to be used, I believe, for like end game, like really high end fishing, I guess. And otherwise, probably a little bit weaker. So it seems like it's fairly close between the runes, depending on your play style, depending on your liking. And obviously, with the cold rune, you have to try to make use of the extra AOE damage as much as possible. While the fire, you straight up just have higher single target damage. In case you're not aware, the fire rune applies the shadow six piece bonus twice, once on the hit, once on the dot. So you have double the single target damage, but no AOE. I actually realized after this run that I had one wrong passive here as well. So I could have been a bit stronger. I had numbing traps, which gives me damage reduction when I slow enemies. So this comes mostly from the beneficial trapped aura. But most of the time I'm actually staying like out of melee range, so I don't actually apply it and I don't really get anything out of it, while I should be running with steady aim, which is actually a quite powerful passive. So 20% multiplicative damage, that's at least half the time or so, it's probably active. And like this, I would probably clear this like at least a minute faster or so. But it was fine in the end. I basically tried to stay at maximum range as much as possible whenever I was able to at least hit uh, some targets with my knives since they have this cone shaped AOE. I try to yeah go to like some place where I can hit multiple targets. And in some cases, when you have like very small pulls, like single target fights or so, or close to it, you have to be kind of close to so actually hit those knives. Because you see here, for example, as the pull thins out, uh, some of the knives just fly off and hit nothing. And you want to avoid that as much as possible. So you always have to try to uh, position yourself. First, maximizing the Zays, but if you don't have enough targets to hit, you want to like go closer. I had a shield pile in this run, which is actually very helpful on this build because it's rather squishy and you have the Squirt's Necklace. But as you see here, I have the Nemesis Bracer on the follower, but she didn't actually spawn a pack. So I got a funny bug here, which I believe was because I proc the awareness exactly in that moment. So there could be some bugs related to that. I remember uh, this can sometimes cause some weird things to happen, but uh, yeah. I lost uh, like an elite pack here that I could have killed pretty quickly, unfortunately. So elites are usually what you want to kill, with, especially the fire rune, because if this high single target damage, especially like yellow elites that pop out of a shield pylon, are usually quite nice unless they roll juggernaut. But it was fine in the end, as you can see here, I'm still progressing, being a little bit ahead of the timer. And this little time that I have ahead is already enough pretty much to kill the boss with impale, especially with the fire rune. You have so much single target damage, the boss melts and like, 30, 45 seconds or something like that, even on this tier. And uh, even when you push higher, you don't really need this chicken on this build. So this is one of the advantages. You have usually a rather fast boss kill, even on like the high end push tiers. And you don't really have to worry that much compared to other builds. One thing I think is worth highlighting that you can see me do here right now is that I go from this one previous room to the next. And you see me trying to stay far away from the pylon spawn. So these rooms in a play tunnel in particular, they always have like a pylon spawn here uh, on the top left side in this little um, alcove. And I tried to get another pylon here and I didn't know 
how much longer this map would progress. As you can see here, I'm still in floor one. I'm at almost 80% progression or so. And I try to squeeze out as much progression as possible to get another pylon on this floor. Because I felt like I was running out of time. You see, this advantage that I had was kind of like melting away here from, yeah, just like some unfortunate fights and some unfortunate elates that took a lot of time. And I felt like I needed at least one other pylon to kind of like make this a safe clear. So I only had the shield and the speed at this point, and obviously I could get way better pylons with power and conduit. Even though this is very late for a colony, it would still help and you know speed up uh, the last few percent at least. So this was kind of what I was playing for. And you see here that I was trying to get like some extra percent progression, and before running to the left, I just went down here in this corner, and then in this, and then in this, and cleaned up everything I could before I went up to here. So at last, around at this point here is where you would spawn the pylon in the top. But I didn't get one anyway because I didn't have enough progression since the previous pylon. So that's this RNG. And sometimes you just need a lot of progression to spawn the next pylon. Sometimes need very little and you can't really tell. So it just comes down to whatever the game decides to throw at you. But you can try to manipulate the RNG in your favor with these little tricks by not you know, forcing or de depleting the pylon spawn here basically too early. But at this point, we can also already see that there is another room coming up here from this little corner. And after doing all this progression, it was pretty safe I would get another pylon. And in this case, I run straight to the pylon spawn, as you can see here. I run straight to the conduit because it was very likely I would get it after clearing the entire room, including the elite. So after I had already discovered a previous pylon spawn, uh, like at 80% or something, and then made another 10% progression, it was a pretty safe bet. So I just rushed there right away. And I got a conduit, so I did last like 10% or so in no time, and suddenly had a lot of time. But it probably would have been fine either way, since you see the boss dies so fast here, especially with the Oculus Rings from Bone Warlock, I was actually kind of fortunate here. And yeah, he just melts away in like 20 seconds or so. And that was the run pretty much. So I skipped through like a few of the like boring parts where I'm just like fighting trash monsters and stuff. And I tried to explain my strategy and my findings a little bit. So to summarize it, cold versus fire is pretty close, but cold is more fishy and probably harder to do than the fire. On the fire, you have to manage your squirts a lot more, which is kind of the difficult part there. So this is where you can really shine if you can keep up your squirts as much as possible. And Aside from this, I think the Shadow Impel Demon Hunter is pretty fun to play. Lots of people are also asking me what about the Marauder Demon Hunter and is this going to be the best? And the answer is, yeah, Shadow is really strong this season and it's definitely the best in like speed farming and solo in four man. You know, it's the, the absolute meta. But Marauders is a better push build. So we don't really see those clear as yet, but this mostly comes down to the popularity of uh, Shadows right now. People just take their farming setup and, and go push with that. But very soon we're going to see higher clears than this with Marauder. So if I took my Marauder now and I augment it and I, I go in there, I would easy peasy last like two feet tiers higher, I believe. So somewhere around that range. And Marauders is also going to clear 150 way earlier than the Shadows. So I expect maybe at 3k or so, we can even see the first 150 Marauder clears already quite early and this might actually happen in like the next two three weeks already and then shadows might do it at like five or six k earliest in any case hope you enjoyed this video hope everyone is having a lot of fun in season 27 so far subscribe for more free content and i'll see you guys next time